Distractions, distractions, distractions. Do you know why people keep saying that about everything that happens? Because there is so much happening at the same time. Your attention is just being diverted to whatever you care about the most. Now, about a week ago, there was a train derailment in East Palestine, Ohio. There is Palestine, Ohio, which is on the west end of Ohio. And then there is East Palestine, which is at the border of Ohio and Pennsylvania, between Akron and Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh is the closest major city to East Palestine. Salem, Ohio is also close to East Palestine. So what happened was the train derailed just outside of town as the railroad runs right through the middle of town. Now, when that happened, chemicals started leaking and boiling out of the tanks and they decided that instead of risking an explosion, they would just burn the chemicals and release them into the atmosphere in what they call a controlled burn. They call it a controlled burn and all that means is that they won't let the fire burn the whole town down. They don't control the chemicals being released into the environment. I don't think people truly understand the level of severity here. It reminds me of a song most of you have probably never heard of. It's by a band called Gunship and the song is called Dark All Day. I want to read a few of the lyrics here, but you can go listen to the song on their channel if you like. In the first verse, the lyrics are, as he takes from me my last breath, inhale. I'm picking up the scent. What a hell of a feeling. It is dark all day, but there is something in the sky that glows. What a hell of a feeling with such a brilliant mind. Can you feel those chemicals in the air tonight? Then it goes into the chorus and in the second verse it sounds like they are talking about lighting a fire and then dragging the river for chemicals. Listen, what a hell of a day to embrace disorder and there is something in your eyes that burns. Light up, drag the river. Can you see there are chemicals in the air tonight? So what we have to understand first and foremost is that we are not being given the whole story. They never give us the whole story. We have to get that from other people. We have to get the real news from people who live in the area. Next, the chemicals that were on that train, there wasn't just vinyl chloride. There was 150 rail cars. 20 of them had chemicals and I believe only four or five of them were vinyl chloride. So what was it that they were carrying that they burned into the atmosphere, you ask? According to a letter from the EPA, Southern Train comprised of roughly 150 rail cars derailed. Approximately 20 rail cars were listed as carrying hazardous materials. Cars containing vinyl chloride, butyl acrylate, ethyl hexyl acrylate, and ethylene glycol monobutyl ether are known to have been and continue to be released to the air, surface soils, and surface waters. Now when you burn vinyl chloride, it becomes hydrogen chloride. Hydrogen chloride likes to bind to water, whether that's liquid water or water vapor. When it does that, it becomes hydrochloric acid, okay? Butyl acrylate is another toxic 
flammable chemical that they use to make paint, coatings, caulks, sealants, adhesives. The vapors from this stuff can form explosive mixtures in the air and it's heavier than other chemicals so it settles quickly into the soil and water, leaving a slick film on water surfaces. It gets into the sewer systems where it can be a fire hazard because it's flammable and that it could ignite in the sewer systems or in basements. With ethyl hexyl acrylate, the vapors cause drowsiness and convulsions. Of course, all these chemicals irritate the eyes, burn the lungs, and irritate and burn the skin. They use this chemical again to make paints and plastics. And this is another acidic chemical that will react well with butyl acrylate. Now, ethylene glycol monobutyl ether is a lot like butyl acrylate. It's used in varnishes and paints and solvents. It reacts with bases, aluminum, and oxidizing. It forms peroxides when exposed to air and light, and it will eat away at some plastics and rubber. It's also a heavy chemical, so it settles in sewers and basements as well. You know, there are a couple of waterways, Leslie's Run and uh, Sulphur Run, which is a strange name, and these two water systems flow from East Palestine. It flows from Pennsylvania to the Ohio River and all the way down through Ohio to West Virginia and Maryland, then Virginia, North Carolina. It flows from East Palestine. It runs down and across through Cincinnati, Louisville, Kentucky, through Tennessee into the Mississippi River into Louisiana and into the waterways of Texas. This water system that is connected is also connected to the Missouri River Basin, the Arkansas White Red River Basin, the Upper Mississippi River Basin. That's almost half the U.S. Now I don't know what the level of contamination will be along these water systems but that really comes down to how much of those chemicals was released and there is no safe amount to ingest, folks. I don't see how East Palestine is any longer habitable. The fish are dying. It started around 3,000 estimated dead, but it's probably in the tens of thousands now. Floating down the waterways, the forest wildlife are getting sick and dying. Remember, the animals drink from those water systems they don't use faucets and filters these animals are stepping out of the woods after having a sip and dropping dead children are complaining about breathing problems people are getting headaches it's a mess look these chemicals are in the environment now they don't just go away either sometimes there is weather you get rain you get snow you get flooding just a swish and swirl of chemicals. When the grass stops growing and the trees start dying, then you know you have a serious problem on your hands. Acid rain is also another concern. Cancer is a major concern down the line for anybody living around that area. That's always a matter when we're dealing with toxins and chemicals. Now, vinyl chlorine... Now, vinyl chloride is a chlorinated hydrocarbon. And when a chlorinated hydrocarbon is exposed to high temperatures, you get phosgene gas, which is one of the most deadly chemical weapons used in World War I. According to the CDC, phosgene was used extensively during World War I as a choking pulmonary agent. Among the chemicals used in war, phosgene was responsible for the large majority of deaths. And what I just said is a fact. Folks, if you watch this channel, there is no way you believe in coincidences. And for this particular train, holding these particular chemicals, I don't even understand how one train was allowed to carry 20 cars of flammable, highly toxic chemicals in the first place. Why don't we just power trains with nuclear reactors while we're at it? 
I mean, is this standard? Are there many trains like this with thousands of gallons of flammable low flash point chemicals? The flash point of chemicals is the minimum temperature needed to ignite a chemical. Those chemicals had a flash point of 120 to 180 degrees Fahrenheit, but the vinyl chloride had a flash point of negative 110 degrees, which means it would ignite at any temperature. You breathe wrong and that stuff will ignite. I mean, anything below a zero flash point, I don't see how that's safe to carry on a train. What if the train derails? Oh, I guess we didn't think about that. Listen, I understand these chemicals have to be transported some way, somehow. But how about you take it slow? I mean, how fast was this train going that it derailed? Why did it derail in the first place? Well, they don't know now. Right now, it was just an accident, which is still under investigation. Now, according to the National Transportation Board, 38 rail cars derailed and a fire ensued, which damaged an additional 12 cars. There were 20 total hazardous material cars in the train, consist 11 of which derailed. And here's the list of what derailed. Those that are highlighted are the 11 rail cars with the hazardous chemicals. So it looks like they lost a lot of malt liquor, some polyethylene, lube oil, propylene glycol, benzene, which is another toxic flammable chemical that is known to cause cancer in humans. So they just carry all this stuff on one train and they just wanted to mosey along the railroad through town after town. You know, there was a movie released on Netflix called White Noise, which depicts a train explosion in Salem, Ohio, which is right northwest to East Palestine, almost the next town over. Some of the extras in the movie were from East Palestine. It's amazing to me how they said that the people who evacuated, they told them that it was safe to return home. If that was me, I'm moving out of town. People are coming back home to dead pets, dead livestock, the air stinks. I don't know. You know, folks, there have been quite a few train derailments around the world lately. And a common cause of these derailments is track buckling from extreme heat and cold and with these crazy weather patterns the train tracks and roads have started buckling in many places they can't keep up with the road and track maintenance the earth is changing geographically and so we're probably going to see more tracks and streets buckling the crust on the earth seems to be changing Soon you will start to see sinkholes opening up again. Now in the case of this train derailment in Ohio, they say it was an accident, but we really don't know. All I have to say is accident my ass. With all these chemical explosions at facilities and trains and trucks, they are spilling a lot of chemicals and putting a lot of toxins into the environment worldwide, accidentally. That's all for now. I would like to thank all of our new Level 1 members of WoodwardEntertainment.com. I have more content coming to the Member Level 1 section very soon. I want to thank all of our sponsors and donors. I have new merchandise coming soon, and you can always follow me on Instagram at J-A-E Woodward. Everyone have a great day. Watch the water. Look out for trains, planes, and automobiles. And as always... Stay awake, stay aware, stay safe, and I'll talk to you all soon.